Hello everyone. Welcome to UIAS. Let's discuss today's prelims topics. Question 1 Consider the following statements about brain fog. One brain fog can arise after several sleepless nights while taking certain medications like antihistamines or as a result of jet lag. Two brain fog can also be a symptom of illness. It can occur with Lyme disease, lupus, and multiple sclerosis after cancer treatment or even during a particularly bad cold. Three brain fog tends to affect executive function, a set of skills that are essential for planning, organizing information, following directions, and multitasking, among other things. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is C. In recent years, the term has also become closely associated with the cognitive impairment many people experience during or after about with COVID-19. Roughly 20 to 30 percent of COVID patients have some brain fog that persists or develops during the three months after their initial infection, and more than 65 percent of those with long COVID report neurological symptoms too. Question 2 With reference to double asteroid redirection test, DART, mission, consider the following statements. 1. It is a European Space Agency, ESA, mission. 2. It aimed at testing a method of planetary defense against near-Earth objects, NEOs. 3. It was designed to assess the potential of a spacecraft impact to deflect an asteroid through a transference of momentum. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. It is a NASA space mission. DART is a joint project between NASA and the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, APL. Question 3 with reference to hydroelectricity, consider the following statements. 1. Hydroelectricity is a type of static electricity that forms on water droplets and can be transferred from droplets to small dust particles. To the phenomenon is common in the Earth's atmosphere, but has also been observed in the steam escaping from boilers. 3. It was the basis for a proposal by Albert Einstein to tap electricity from the air, an idea that has been recently revived. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. It was the basis for a proposal by Nikola Tesla to tap electricity from the air, an idea which has been recently revived. Hydroelectric charge is the likely source of the electric charge which, under certain conditions such as exist in thunderstorms, volcanic eruptions, and some dust storms, gives rise to lightning. The key to harvesting electricity from humid air lies in a tiny device comprising two electrodes and a thin layer of material filled with nanopores. These nanopores, each less than 100 nanometers in diameter, allow water molecules from the air to pass through the device. As these molecules move from an upper chamber to a lower chamber, they interact with the edges of the nanopores, leading to a buildup of electric charge imbalances between the chambers. This process effectively transforms the device into a miniature battery, generating continuous electricity. One of the most significant advantages of this technology is its versatility. Unlike other renewable energy sources such as solar and wind, air humidity is continuously available, making it a sustainable reservoir of energy. Moreover, this technology can be applied to a wide range of materials, including wood and silicon, as long as they possess the required nanopores. This breakthrough dramatically increases its potential for broad deployment and scalability. Unlike other renewable energy sources such as solar and wind, 
air humidity is continuously available, making it a sustainable reservoir of energy. Moreover, this technology can be applied to a wide range of materials, including wood and silicon, as long as they possess the required nanopores. This breakthrough dramatically increases its potential for broad deployment and scalability. Question 4 Consider the following statements about Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. 1. Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana, launched in 2016, aims to provide monetary support to farmers. 2. It was formulated in line with the One Nation, One Scheme theme by replacing the earlier two schemes National Agricultural Insurance Scheme, NACE, and the modified National Agricultural Insurance Scheme, MNAIs, by incorporating their best features and removing their inherent drawbacks, shortcomings. 3. It aims to reduce the premium burden on farmers and ensure early settlement of crop assurance claim for the full insured sum. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is C. PMFBY aims to provide a comprehensive insurance cover against failure of the crop thus helping in stabilizing the income of the farmers. The scheme covers all food and all seeds crops and annual commercial horticultural crops for which past yield data is available and for which the requisite number of crop cutting experiments CCs, are being conducted under the General Crop Estimation Survey GCAs. The scheme is implemented by impaneled general insurance companies. Selection of implementing agency IA, is done by the concerned state government through bidding. The scheme is being administered by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. Question 5 Cannabis Research Project of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine CSIRIM, is a first of its kind in India initiated in private-public partnership with a Canadian firm which has great potential to put the substance of abuse for the good of mankind, especially for patients suffering from neuropathies, cancer, and epilepsy, set up at A. Sikkim B. Himachal Pradesh C. Ladakh D. Jammu The answer is D. Question 6. Consider the following statements about silver coxcomb. 1. The plant is known for its very dark colors. 2. In India and China, it is known as a troublesome weed. 3. For the Soligas tribe in Karnataka, known for their traditional knowledge of ecology, silver coxcomb is a nutritious leafy green vegetable that grows well even on fallow land and in drought-like conditions. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. The plant is known for its very bright colors. Silver coxcomb is a beautiful but troublesome weed. If left unchecked, it can spread quickly and suppress the growth of other crops, affecting their yield. It also attracts insects, caterpillars, worms and moths that can harm crops. It also attracts insects, caterpillars, worms and moths that can harm crops. In Karnataka's Chamrajanagara district, where silver coxcomb is referred to as ansopu, farmers of the Soliga tribe say controlling the weed can cost up to 2000 rupees per acre, 0.4 hectare per year. Yet they do not consider silver coxcomb a weed. For the Soligas, Known for their traditional knowledge of ecology, silver coxcomb is a nutritious leafy green vegetable that grows well even on fallow land and in drought-like conditions. Also known as Logos spinach, the weed belongs to the Amaranthaceae family, which includes economically important plants like spinach, Spinacea oleracea, beetroot, and quinoa. The plant is known as Celosia argentia in the scientific lexicon, Kudu in Marathi, and Panini Kire in Tamil. 
Silver coxcomb is a short-lived 50 to 60 cm tall plant that bears simple, spirally arranged leaves around the stem with pinkish or silky white flowers. Since it grows widely on farmlands across the country, most farmers use the plant as fodder. But like the Soliga tribe, some communities also consume it as a leafy vegetable. Question 7 Consider the following statements about fluorine. 1. Fluorine is a highly reactive element used to make fluorochemicals, which in turn are used to produce plastics, agrochemicals, lithium-ion batteries, and drugs. 2. Fluorine comes from a calcium salt called calcium fluoride or fluor spar. Which of the above statements is correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. Both. D. None. The answer is C. Fluorine is a highly reactive element used to make fluorochemicals, which in turn are used to produce plastics, agrochemicals, lithium-ion batteries, and drugs. Fluorine comes from a calcium salt called calcium fluoride or fluor spar. Fluor spar is mined and then treated with sulfuric acid at a high temperature to release hydrogen fluoride, HF. HF is then made to react with other compounds to create fluorochemicals. Fluor spar is mined and then treated with sulfuric acid at a high temperature to release hydrogen fluoride, HF. HF is then made to react with other compounds to create fluorochemicals. A major downside of this process is that HF is an extremely poisonous and corrosive liquid that irritates the eyes and respiratory tract even at low concentrations. It also requires special transportation and storage requirements. Question 8. Consider the following statements about Fragile X Syndrome FXS. 1. This is a genetic disorder characterized by mild to moderate intellectual disability. To the average IQ in males with FXS is under 55, while about two-thirds of affected females are intellectually disabled. Three females are usually more affected than males. How many of the above statements are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. D. None. The answer is B. Physical features may include a long and narrow face, large ears, flexible fingers, and large testicles. About a third of those affected have features of autism such as problems with social interactions and delayed speech. Hyperactivity is common and seizures occur in about 10%. Males are usually more affected than females. There is no cure. Early intervention is recommended as it provides the most opportunity for developing a full range of skills. These interventions may include special education, speech therapy, physical therapy, or behavioral therapy. Thank you, everyone. Do subscribe to this channel. Use code SPLIVE to join an academy.